one clear example of this that that I think uh, is an example of sort of like reusing representations is we teach Claude to not just answer in English, but you know it can answer in French, it can answer mm. in, in sort of like a variety of languages. And if if you know again, there's two ways to do this, right? If if I ask you you know a question in French and a question in English, you could like sort of like have a separate part of your brain that sort of like processes the English and a separate part that processes the French. Um, at some point, that gets super expensive if you want to answer many questions in many languages. And so another thing that, that we find is that some of these representations are shared across languages. And so if you ask the same question in two different languages, and let's say you know you ask uh, what's the opposite of, of sort of like the concept of big is shared in French and English and you know Japanese and, and all these other languages. And that kind of makes sense again if you're trying to talk speak ten different languages, you shouldn't learn ten versions of each specific word you might use. And that doesn't happen in really small models. So like tiny models like the ones we studied a few years ago, you know, like then like Chinese Claude is just like totally different than like mm. French Claude and like English Claude. But then as the models get bigger and they train on more data, like somehow that pushes together in the middle and you get this like universal language in which like it's kind of, you know, thinking about the question in the same way no matter how you asked it and then like translating it back out into the language of the of the question.